All right, so we've got our data table made. We've got some items put in the world. Oh, one thing we do need to do. I'm going back to the data table to apply all the classes that we made in the last one. So under the rusted sword, I'm gonna set it to that rusted sword BP. Iron sword we don't have yet, but that wood shield, I'm gonna set it to that wood shield that we made. And then I'm gonna save that. I forgot to do that in the last one, so that's my bad. But I'm gonna save real quick. It's already saved. Okay. So now what we want to do is when we interact with these, we want to be able to put them in our inventory. So first thing we need to do is actually give our character a little radius that says what she can interact with. So into the player blueprint, I'm going to highlight the mesh and I'm going to add a sphere collision. And this will be the interact radius, which I'm going to set to about 100 on the radius, on the shape. So anything inside this radius is basically what she'll be able to interact with, touch, pick up, use if it's doors, open, you know, etc. So compile that. So right now with it like this, if I pressed interact with something in here, well we haven't set up the actual input function, but it would pick up every single thing. So what we need to do is in the event graph, we're going to highlight the interact radius, and we're going to go all the way down the details panel to the on component begin overlap, which is the second one. Highlight it one more time, and then hit the third one, which is the end overlap. So this basically, it's an event that will function that will fire off once it overlaps with an item and fire again once it stops overlapping with an item. So what we want to do is we want to check the other actor that this is overlapping and say does it implement an interface? The interface being that interact BPI. Then we'll add a branch holding B on the keyboard and left clicking and if it does then we want to add a unique instance of that. So what so you can add under the array. There's a bunch of these different adds, but you want the ones under the array. So the add will add the item to the array, but if it overlaps multiple times or registers multiple times, you'll get multiple instances of that item. But if you add a unique, it'll check the name of it and see if it already exists in your array. And if it doesn't, then it'll add that it's that one particular item. So you want the add unique. Just to make sure I ain't full of crap right now, let me just check. Just check my notes real quick. I don't want to put y'all on the wrong path. <laughs> it is 7 in the morning, I could be wrong. Interact. All right. So, yep, add unique. That's what I thought. So, yeah, we'll add unique. And what we want to add this actor to is an array that we're about to create by dragging off this variable, promoting it to a variable called interactables in range. So, every time we overlap with something, it'll check to see if it has this interact interface and if it does it'll add it to this array of actors around us that we can interact with so when we stop overlapping something we want to check to see did the thing that we just over stop overlapping also implement that interface going to copy and paste that and hook it up just like that hook it to the other actor and if it does, then we want to drag off our interactables in range and remove the item from our interactables array. So now we need to actually set up an input function. So in the project settings, which if you don't have, then you'll go under edit, project settings, and it'll open up this window. And under input, these are all the key mappings. We can get rid of the reset VR. We don't need that one. So under, I'm going to add an action mapping called interact. 
And for the key, I'm just going to use the E because that's become pretty much standard in computer games, it seems. So you can set it to whatever button you like. I'm going to use E. So under the player blueprint, now above where we're adding these interactables to our array, I'm going to right click and type in interact. I don't want to call the function. I don't want the event. I, won't, I don't want the interface call. I want to scroll until I find the action events. So this is the actual key press. So on input action interact, we want to check to see, we want to drag out our little array that we just made over here and get the, no, we want to get the length, which you just type length. You don't type get length, it's just length. And off the return value, which arrays start from zero. So like if I highlight this array, and I add an element, it'll say index is zero. But the way it measures the length is that index at zero is item one. So it's, it's a little confusing to get used to, but it, it's, yeah. So the length, we want to see if it's greater than zero. So if the length is greater than zero, that means there's an item that we can interact with in range, and we should try to do something with that. So we'll B left click forward branch, hook that up just like that. And then off the true, we want to drag out that array one more time. You could use this one over here, but I don't like wires crossing very much. So we're going to drag off of here and get a copy and we want to drag off the get and do interact and this time we want interact BPI message because this will go to the interface and then shoot a message over to this actor this actor in this array and tell it do whatever it says there So, let's just test this real quick. So on overlap, I want to print a string. This is just me demonstrating right now. You don't have to follow this necessarily if you don't want to. So now you see it says one. Hmm. That reminds me. Okay, so under the interact radius, we want to change its collision. Because right now it's also registering our player, but we want it to ignore the pawn. So we'll go to the collision presets, and where it says overlap all dynamic, dynamic, we want it to ignore only the pawn. So we'll compile that real quick. So now when I overlap these, it's not printing anything. Are those counting as pawns? They didn't used to. Those are counting as pawns, okay. Well then, in that case, we'll just leave it overlap all dynamic, and then instead of seeing if it's greater than zero, we'll see if it's greater than one, and then we'll get one. Because the player is apparently going to register as the first. So yeah, now that's working okay. So yeah, a little bit of an adjustment, but we found a workaround to be all right. So now we want to make sure that, since it's always going to have one item in it, we want to make sure that it's greater than one. And then when we do, since the player is going to now be the first index every time, we'll just make sure that we're getting the second item in the array, which is number one. I know, a little confusing.
but that seems to be working out just like it's supposed to so I'm going to delete this print string but now just make sure I'm not going too long 10 minutes All right, we'll add it into the next one. All right, so that's all it takes to get items actually being picked up. And in the next one, we'll add it to the inventory. So I will see you in the next one.